What do you think will be the core industry of the Chinese Communist Party in the future? New energy vehicles? Solar panels? Wrong. The CCP's most advanced industry is its organ transplant matching system and its massive live organ bank, Chinese people. This is not alarmist talk. Today, let's discover the truth of China's fastest growing and most terrifying industry, organ transplant. On March 29, 2024, a horrifying video appeared on the social platform X. A young man from mainland China said that he accidentally discovered that his Alipay app was automatically bound to an organ donation organization and consented to organ donation. His human organ donation registration information was synchronized with Alipay. In other words, he was registered as an organ donation volunteer without his knowledge. He said with certainty, I have never consented to it. He also said, I know very well whether I should donate organs. I don't donate organs because I know there are many opinions about organ donation among people. You can go and find out for yourself. Here, there are many opinions among people about organ donation, refers to the explosive growth of organ transplants in mainland China over the years and the accompanying occurrence of more and more young people vanishing and dying in various strange ways. And when their bodies were found, they were often in the river, accompanied by the unique phenomenon of missing major organs. It's no longer an isolated case and has greatly impacted the public. In 2023, CCP's Central Television reported, through China's computerized system for the allocation and sharing of human organs, a list of donors that best match the patient can be automatically calculated within seconds. Thus, many young people in China mockingly refer to themselves as walking organ banks. This is especially true when one registers as a volunteer organ donor, which makes one a legitimate donor. If you have an accident, your organs can be taken away at will. Of course, such accidents can be real or man-made. Therefore, this man said in the end, I was registered as an organ donor against my will four days later after I had a medical checkup in Guangzhou. After this incident, I really have no idea whether I will be safe in the future. I will do everything to protect myself and stay safe, but I want people to be aware of things like this. Everyone, go check your Alipay authorization page. As of 2024, Alipay's active users in mainland China have exceeded 1 billion. It is China's largest electronic payment platform and online community. Each user's personal information and privacy are controlled by Alipay. The scariest thing is that it can also proactively make organ donation decisions for the users. Of course, Alipay is only a tool, but behind its behavior is the tip of the iceberg of the CCP's systematic forced organ harvesting from living people. China leads the world in the number of organ transplants per year. In 2020, according to Huang Jiefu, chairman of the Organ Transplant Development Foundation and former vice minister of health, Chinese organ transplants still cannot meet the needs of socioeconomic development. In 2023, it was number one in the world with 50,000 transplants reported that year. But the real number is much higher. As early as 2016, David Kilgore, Canada's former Secretary of State for Asia and the Pacific, Ethan Gutman, a veteran investigative journalist, and David Matis, an international human rights lawyer, released a report on the CCP's forced harvesting of organs from living people. The report estimated that the number of organ transplants performed in China was about 60,000 to 100,000 per year, 
and that the cumulative number since 2000 could be as high as 1.5 million. This is only a conservative estimate. Organ transplants in China are in huge quantity and occurring at an alarming rate. For instance, according to the U.S. Department of Health, the average wait time for a liver transplant in the U.S. is 796 days. According to the China Liver Transplant Registry, CLTR, between 2005 and 2006, patients can receive matching livers within days or even hours. These facts illustrate that there is an extremely large, readily accessible pool of human organs in China. For the CCP, organ transplants offer enormous political and economic benefits. These benefits are inextricably linked to the main recipients of the organs. In December 2022, a high-ranking CCP member, Gao Zhanxiang, the former secretary of the party group of the CCP's Federation of Literature and Art, died of illness. When publishing an article in his memory, Zhu Yongxin, Deputy Secretary General of the National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, CPPCC, mentioned that over the years, multiple organs have been replaced in Gao's body. This reveals a secret that organ transplants are a common phenomenon among high-ranking CCP officials. Gao was only a ministerial-level official and was able to have his organs replaced multiple times as needed. Inside the CCP, plenty of officials rank higher than him, and there are even more family members of those officials, as well as rich people who are in collusion with these officials. Supplying organs to the rich and powerful in the CCP is one of the main purposes of the communist regime's forced organ harvesting from living people. In addition to supplying organs to the CCP elite, the CCP also uses the organs as a bargaining chip for attracting dignitaries or tycoons from all over the world who are in need of organs, thereby reaping huge political benefits. The CCP also cooperates with countries and regions of the Belt and Road Initiative for organ transplants, thus exporting its criminal forced organ harvesting model overseas, becoming another manipulation tool in addition to attracting massive investment. Political interests aside, there is also a big population of patients waiting for transplants in overseas countries. From the data released by the Shenyang-based International Transplant Network Assistance Center, the international pricing for various human organs in 2006 was corneas $30,000, lungs $150,000 to $170,000, hearts $130,000 to $160,000, kidneys $62,000, livers $98,000 to $130,000, and pancreases and kidneys $150,000. The center's website states, the ability to perform such a number of transplants is inseparable from the support of the Chinese government. In 2021, the Hunan Provincial Health Commission issued a pricing chart for organ donation. For example, a liver cost 260,000 yuan for an adult and 100,000 for a child under 18. 160,000 for a single adult kidney and 230,000 for two kidneys, 100,000 for a single child's kidney and 150,000 for two kidneys, 100,000 for a heart, 80,000 for a lung, 50,000 for a pancreas, and 10,000 for a single cornea and 20,000 for a pair of corneas. Considering the large number of transplants in China each year, it is evident that the economic benefits are enormous. Before 1999, the number of human organ transplants in China was very small. It began to rise gradually until reaching a peak between 2003 and 2006, with about 12,000 to 20,000 transplants per year. This coincides with the CCP's persecution of Falun Gong, a spiritual cultivation group that believes in truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. Although the CCP claimed that the organs came from death row inmates, it simply couldn't explain the huge number of transplants. The independent, London-based China Tribunal said in 2019 that large-scale forced organ harvesting from living people has been taking place in China for some 20 years, and that Falun Gong practitioners have been identified as the main source of organ supply. 
In recent years, illegal organ harvesting is now involving other faith groups such as the Uyghurs and Christians, as well as targeting the general public. Over the years, the United Nations Committee Against Torture and the U.S. Congress have repeatedly pointed out that the tyrannical killing of political prisoners and prisoners of conscience exists in China's organ transplant industry. In November 2022, the American College of Forensic Nursing and Doctors Against Forced Organ Harvesting, DAFO, hosted an online summit. Deborah Collins Perica, Director of Nursing Affairs, said that forced organ harvesting from living, innocent people without voluntary consent is the most heinous act. Forced organ harvesting refers to the forced removal of body organs from living people without free, voluntary consent. The killing of innocent people for their organs is a most egregious act. In China, the practice is approved and sponsored by the government. It provides profit and reputation for China's transplant industry. It is managed by police and with military oversight. On March 20th, 2024, U.S. Representative Zach Nunn of Iowa, speaking at a CCP hearing on forced organ harvesting from living people, said, this is not a sci-fi movie. This is not written from a horror book. This is happening right now, today, in the most populous country in the world. And those who have repeatedly been persecuted, the Uyghurs, Falun Gong, and detainees, are oftentimes the subject of these heinous crimes. In this time of madness, the large-scale slaughter of a population has to stop. A political commentator stated, Why does China's organ transplant industry continue to grow wildly despite the international community's constant exposure of the CCP's crime of forced organ harvesting? It is mainly because there are too many interests involved behind the scenes. Due to the drastic increase in the demand for organs, the original number of forced donors is not enough to cover the needs, so the CCP can only look for other sources of organ supply. However, there are very few voluntary donors in society. China now has the world's largest biological data database, making organ matching much easier. The CCP can and will kill people for organs on demand at any time. Therefore, the evil hand of illegal forced organ harvesting from living people has gradually reached out to faith groups such as the Uyghurs and Christians, and even to ordinary members of the public. The healthy and energetic young generation has been the hardest hit by illegal forced organ harvesting. Millions of people have gone missing every year in mainland China in recent years, with children and teenagers accounting for about 10% of them. Why do they go missing? Why do public security departments refuse to open cases for children's disappearance? Why are many of the bodies found in rivers? And why does the disappearance of organs often accompany these cases? These are terrifying questions to think about. On March 25, 2024, a 13-year-old girl, Xiao Han, left home at 6.50 p.m. in Shanxi province and never returned. Eleven days later, her body was recovered from the water under a bridge. Surveillance video shows that on the night of the disappearance, she suddenly took off running, seemingly to escape from something, and light from a flashlight directed from behind struck her on the back. A netizen broke the news. Han's body had several organs missing, but the government official issued a notice to dispel it as a rumor. On March 2nd, a senior high school student, Ruan Xiangyang, in Hubei, disappeared in a blind spot in a surveillance area on the way home from school. 29 days later, the body was found in the river at the place where he disappeared. The death was suspicious, and the family questioned it, but it was shut down by the authorities. Here are more missing cases from January 2024. On January 20th, a 15-year-old girl from Jiangsu disappeared. On the evening of January 21st, a 16-year-old girl from Jiangxi disappeared on her way back to school and her remains were found in the Taojiang River eight days later. On January 22nd, a 23-year-old boy from Shanxi disappeared. On January 23rd, a 33-year-old woman from Shanxi disappeared. On January 24th, a 31-year-old woman from Shandong disappeared. 
On January 25th, a 35-year-old woman from Henan disappeared. On January 26th, a 14-year-old girl from Guangxi disappeared. On January 27th, a 29-year-old man from Ningxia disappeared. On January 28th, a 12-year-old girl from Henan disappeared. On the same day, a 10-year-old boy from Anhui disappeared. From last year, on December 1st, a 17-year-old girl from Guangxi disappeared. On December 2nd, an 11-year-old boy from Jilin disappeared. On December 2nd, a 14-year-old boy from Henan disappeared. On December 9th, Zhang Xinwei, an 18-year-old high school student from Jiangsu, disappeared. His remains were found in a river 37 days later. Amidst much suspicion, his father sought justice for his son and was intimidated by the police. In the same month, the father of Xie Changyang, a 15-year-old boy from Shanxi province, posted a sign on his vehicle to seek justice, claiming that his child's body was found in a river four months after he had disappeared mysteriously. His head and limbs had disappeared, with both of his kidneys removed. Among the cases of youth disappearing in recent years, the one that has attracted the most attention is the disappearance of high school student Hu Xinyu in Jiangxi province in October 2022. He strangely disappeared inside a school building. After a 106-day search, his body was found bizarrely hanging in the woods next to the school and there were signs of surgery on the body. Because the school would not provide the key surveillance video, the local government and police took coercive measures against his parents' appeal and suppressed the protest crowd, and the case became a national sensation. Just before he disappeared, he underwent a medical examination, which is an important prerequisite for organ matching. It was later confirmed by sources within the CCP system that this high school student had his organs harvested while he was alive. Some locals also disclosed that there was a big shot, an influential person, in need of an organ transplant, but the blood type of this big shot was rare, and whose blood type was a perfect match. There are many more such cases. It is important to note that China has the world's largest number of surveillance cameras, big data, face recognition, health codes, and the like. If one says a word against the CCP online, the CCP can arrest you anytime but most missing youth cases are unsolved. Is it because these cases can't be solved? Or the CCP doesn't want to solve them? Many people question whether this is closely related to illegal forced organ transplants. Meanwhile, the CCP has openly pushed organ donation to children. It has promoted the campaign of organ donation in schools, requiring parents to sign their children's organ donation agreement the CCP also uses various forms of art to make false presentations of the greatness of organ donors. So, children are moved to tears and voluntarily sign the organ donation forms. Some Red Cross societies have even gone to elementary schools and asked students to raise their hands and take an oath to donate organs. There is a passage in the new 2023 edition of the High School English Textbook in which a high school student says that he is already 18 years old, so he will sign an organ donation agreement without consulting his parents. Some students went home and asked their parents, who were shocked. After the screenshot of the English textbook was posted online, parents were outraged. They think schools have taken advantage of the fact that many parents don't know English and carry out evil propaganda to collude with organ theft. In December 2023, China's State Council promoted a new version of the Regulations on Human Organ Donation and Transplant, which will come into effect on May 1, 2024. The regulations adopt the principles of voluntary and gratuitous organ donation and require strengthening the management of human organ transplantation. It has sent chills down the spine of many mainlanders. There are comments that the legalization of organ transplants may be like Pandora's box, which, once opened, will bring endless dire consequences. By coincidence, two in-vehicle mobile products have also appeared along with the release of the new version of the regulations. These are the mobile operating unit and the mobile incinerator. Their purpose is to perform surgeries and incinerate corpses anywhere, anytime. 
This has once again raised concerns about illegal organ theft in China. Zhuzhou Central Hospital in Hunan Province has opened its first mobile operating unit. The promotional video shows that the inside of the vehicle cabin is fully equipped. The doctor can perform an open skull, open chest, and open abdomen surgeries, among others, at the scene of an accident or on the way. A variety of mobile cremation vehicles also began to be promoted online. Although the manufacturer claims that it's only for pets, some models can cremate over 130 pounds or even over 160 pounds of objects in a single session. Some netizens questioned, which kind of pets are so heavy? It's obviously designed for human cremation so that the missing population will have nothing left to be found. This kind of cremation vehicle appeared in 2014 and is now in its fourth generation. The CCP's cruelty and viciousness are beyond imagination, and its tyranny and threats against the Chinese people have no bounds. There is nothing it won't do. Sadly, after decades of suffering, the Chinese people continue to be the victims of the CCP's reign of terror.